Welcome to the 11th part of the tutorial series on how to make tic-tac-toe game in Unity. Why should X have all the fun? If we want to allow our players to pick the starting side, how should we do it? The easiest way to do this would be to give the player a button to click. It would be convenient if we could just click on the player X or player O panels. Unfortunately, they are not buttons. Now, we could create new button elements, delete the panels we have just created and reconnect all of these elements new by swapping out the references to the game objects in the game controller, but this will be extra work and time. One important point to bear in mind, however, is that the button component is just that, a component. We can simply add a button component to the existing player panel game objects and we would not need to make any changes to the existing references to the image or text components on the player panels accommodate a new button. We can add button components to both player panels at the same time using multi-selection editing. Make sure both player X and player O game objects are closed or collapsed. Select both player X and player O game objects. With both player X and player O game objects selected, add a button component using UI button. We don't want these buttons to be interactable by default. We want control over these buttons and will activate them during the appropriate states of the game. With both player X and player O game objects selected, set the button's transition to none. Next, we need to update our code to react to the button being clicked. Open the game controller script for editing. To react to a UI button we will need a public function so we can access it from our new button components. Looking at our code, we are setting the starting player side in awake and resetting it in restart game. We will need a new public function to set the starting side. Create a new public function that returns void called set starting side that has a string parameter called starting side. Set player side to the parameter starting side. Add an if slash else statement, where the logic checks if player side is x and when the if is true, call set player colors with player x as the new player. When the if is false, in the else block, call set player colors with player o as the new player. Public void set starting side, string starting side. Player side equals starting side. If player side equals equals x. Set player colors, player x, player o. Else. Set player colors, player o, player x. As we are now setting the starting side in a function that will be called by the player buttons, we need to remove any code setting player side or the color scheme from inside our script. Remove the line setting player side from awake. Remove the line calling set player colors from awake. Remove the line setting player side from restart game. Remove the line calling set player colors from restart game. If we now wait for the player to choose a side, we can't simply have the game ready and waiting to be played. The game board will have to start in a non-interactable state, so no one can select any grid spaces before they have chosen a starting side. As such, we will now need to find a way to start the game. We have our restart game function, which can help, but restart game is really doing something different. Let's think through our game and the cycle that it goes through as we are playing. The game really exists in a few distinctly different states. Before we created set starting side, the game started in a game playing state. Anyone could jump in and just start playing. The function game over transitioned us into a new state, that of game over. In the game over state, the game board is deactivated, the winning conditions and the winner, if there is one, are displayed. The function restart game would take us back into the game playing state. We are now adding a new state to this cycle. This will be the waiting to play state where we have to choose our starting side. We now need to change a few things. We need to have a way to transition from the waiting to play state into the game playing state. This will be done by calling a function when we click the player panel to choose a side. We also need to change restart game so that it carries us into the waiting to play state rather than the game playing state. The first thing we want to do is set up our waiting to play state. In our waiting to play state, we will want all of the grid spaces on the game board non-interactable. 
we will want the buttons on the player panel, on the other hand, as interactable. This initial state can be set up in the inspector and in awake as our entry point into the game. Let's start by setting all of the grid spaces to non-interactable. Save the script. Return to Unity. Make sure all of the grid space game objects are closed or collapsed so only to root game object is shown in the inspector. Select all of the grid space game objects. Using multi-selection editing, set the button components interactable property to false. While we are in the editor, let's also hook up the buttons to the set starting side function we have just written. Make sure both player X and player O game objects are open or uncollapsed. Select both player X and player O game objects. With both player X and player O game objects selected, add a new row to the buttons on click list. Drag the game controller game oboit from the hierarchy window onto the object field in the new row in the buttons on click list. Set the function in the new row in the buttons on click list to game controller set starting side. We need to now pass in a parameter for either X or O depending upon which button is clicked. We can do this using the argument field in the buttons on click list. When we have a button and we have selected a public function that requires an argument, we can use the argument field to send it. Select only the player X game object. In the argument field in the buttons on click list set the value to X. Select only the player O game object. In the argument field in the buttons on click list set the value to O. This sets up the functionality of the buttons on our player panels. Save the scene. Open the game controller script for editing. To transition from the waiting to play state into the game playing state, we need to call a function when we have selected our player panel and chosen a starting side. This function will be called from set starting side. Create a new function that returns void called start game. Next, we need to call start game. Where want to do this is after we select our starting side. Add a call to start game at the end of set starting side. Restart game will now carry us into the waiting to play state rather than starting the game. Setting the game board as interactable will now be taken care of by start game, so we need to move it. In restart game. Cut the call to set board interactable. In start game. Paste the call to set board interactable. Void start game. Set board interactable, true. This sets up the primary functional code that we need. We will need a little more code to make the game look and feel polished. We will be selecting our starting side by clicking a button. We only want these buttons interactable when the game is waiting to play or the players would be able to, again, arbitrarily restart the game. Just like we did the, the restart button we will need to control when the player panels are interactable. We could add two new variables to hold the references to the buttons, but, as we already have a definition of the player and we are using these references already, let's add a reference to the player panels button component to the player class. To the player class. Add a public button variable called button. System.serializable. Public class player. Public image panel. Public text text. Public button button. By default, the buttons on the player panels are interactable. This is how we set them up in the inspector. Now, in start game we will need to turn them off so they can't be used during the game. In restart game we will need to turn them back on again so the player can choose a side for the next game. Let's do this right from the beginning. Create a new function that returns void called set player buttons that has a boolean parameter called toggle. In set player buttons. Set the player X buttons interactable property to toggle. Set the player O buttons interactable property to toggle. Void set player buttons, bool toggle. Player X dot button dot interactable equals toggle. Player O dot button dot interactable equals toggle. In start game. Call set player buttons with false as the argument. Set player buttons, false. In restart game. 
Call set player buttons with true as the argument. Set player buttons, true. The last bit of polish we need to do before we test this step is to remove the highlight from the current player panel when we restart the game. When the game is over, the last player to take a turn has their panel highlighted. When we restart the game, we need to reset this back to the starting color. Again, we want to put all of this code in a single place that we can easily call from any function. Create a new function that returns void called set player colors inactive. Set all of the player's panels and text to the inactive color scheme. Void set player colors inactive. Player x dot panel dot color equals inactive a player color dot panel color. Player x dot text dot color equals inactive a player color dot text color. Player o dot panel dot color equals inactive a player color dot panel color. Player o dot text dot color equals inactive a player color dot text color. In restart game. Call set player colors inactive. Now, as we have put all of this code into one place and we can call it any time we want, let's add a call to set player colors inactive when there is a draw. This way neither player gets their panel highlighted if they did not win. We need to associate the player button references on the game controller with the two player game objects. Select the game controller game object. With the game controller game object select in game over when the winning player is draw. Call set player colors inactive. If winning player equals equals draw. Set game over text, it's a draw. Set player colors inactive. Save the script. Return to Unity. We need to associate the player button references on the game controller with the two player game objects. Select the game controller game object. With the game controller game object selected, drag the player x game object onto the player x button field. Drag the player o game object onto the player o button field. Select the child text game objects of player x and player o and delete them. Select both button components and set the anchor preset to stretch by holding shift and alt key. Also, set the color alpha of image component in the inspector to zero. Save the scene. Enter play mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. When we first come to the game board, all of the grid spaces are inactive. We can't do anything with them. To start the game, we need to select a side by clicking either the X or the O. Once we have chosen our side, the game plays normally. When the game is over, we get our banner displaying the winning conditions and the restart button is displayed. If we have a draw, then neither player is highlighted as the winner. When we restart the game, we can choose a new starting side. The only problem I see here is that when looking at the game for the first time, we don't know what we are supposed to do. The game board is locked. It's inactive. If we don't know that we need to click either the X or the O, we may feel the game is broken and quit. As the final and last step, Let's add a small descriptive panel informing us to pick a side. Duplicate the restart button game object in the hierarchy. Select the restart button, 1, game object. With restart button, 1, game object selected. Rename the game object to start info. Set the image components color to blue, 0, 204, 204, 255, using the preset. We have duplicated a UI button element. We don't want the button functionality, however. We simply want this UI element to be a display panel with a background and text. Now, just as we added a button component to a panel by using the add component menu, we can also simply remove a button and its functionality from a game object by removing the component. With the start info game object selected, Remove the button component using the context sensitive gear menu. Now we need to change the text displayed on the panel. Select the child text game object of the start info game object. With the text game object selected, set the text property to X or O, and on a new line choose a side. Set the font size to 21. All we have to do now is set up this panel so we only see it when we need to choose a side during the waiting to play state of the game.
Open the game controller script for editing. Declare a public game object variable called start info. Public game object start info. This panel will start in an active state. This is how we have it set up in the inspector and we have not modified the state in awake. When the player chooses a side and the game starts, we want to deactivate the panel. When the game is over and the player chooses to restart, we want to reactivate it. In start game. Deactivate the start info game object. Start info dot set active, false. Restart game. Activate the start info game object. Start info dot set active, true, save the script. Return to Unity. Now all we need to do is hook up the start info game object to the game controller. Select the game controller game object. With the game controller game object selected, drag the start info game object onto the start info field. Save the scene. Enter play mode. Test by selecting a side and clicking any of the spaces. Now we are done. We start in a state where we are waiting to play. There is a small piece of instructional text informing us that we need to choose a side and two buttons for our starting player to choose the side the want. When a player chooses a side, the game begins. This removes the instructional text, makes the player buttons non-interactable and enables the game board by making the grid space buttons interactable. Gameplay allows us to choose any of the grid spaces. The button associated with the grid space asks the game controller for the current player's side and sets the grid space with the appropriate text and then sets itself as non-interactable. As a final act, the grid space button hands control back to the game controller to check the winning conditions and if the game is not over, the game controller changes sides and the game continues. When the game is over, we change states again into our game over state. Here we display the winning panel and activate the restart button. Selecting the restart button sends us back to our starting state and we are waiting to play, with our instructional text and buttons for our player to choose a side. This completes our basic game tic-tac-toe using UI tools.